Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone on ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16. I'm your host, RB Kelly, and I'm here today with a very good friend of mine, and I am so glad she's come back. Now, last time you were here, we talked about networking, and we talked about some of the things that people struggle with at networking, that I struggle with at networking, and if you remember, I was here with Pam Chambers, one of Honolulu's top 10 most admired women. Pam, thank you so much for being here again. I'm so happy you're back. <laughs> I love becoming a regular. I know, right? I feel like we should call it the Pam and Arby Show. <laughs> Once a month on Tuesdays, it'll happen. Thank you. All right. But for those of us, those of our viewers who haven't been watching, can you explain a little bit more about what you do? Mm -hmm. I am a presentation coach. And so what that means is that the way we present ourselves, whether it's physically, verbally, through email, through even now texting, uh, the, at, at a dining situation, at a job interview, the way we present ourselves is how I help people. So it could be group settings, it could be one-on-one, -on -one, it could be classes open to the public or a show like this. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming in and being on the show. Now, when we were talking about networking, we talked about that initial contact mm -hmm. where you're meeting someone for the first time, you're exchanging cards, the do's and the don'ts, mm -hmm. but we also kind of did a little teaser about what we want to cover today, mm -hmm. how to take that initial impression to the next level. Right. So I'm just going to pass the floor over to you, Pam, and just okay. let you start. All right. Well, thank you. So it could be that you decide, I have something more that I want to do with this person. This person and I have something in our future together. So I want to connect with you in person about that. So it could either be a coffee date or a lunch date, but I want to make it a lunch date because that's a little more complicated. Mm. It's a little more out of the comfort zone for some people. So can we pretend? that I want to connect with you. Sure. All right. So I, I have her card, Arby's card, and, and, and I have some business ideas I want to discuss. So I'm going to phone you up. I'm going to stop making eye contact with you because we're on the phone now. There's a wall here. Right. Okay. Ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling, sound of phone ringing. Hello? Is this Arby? Yes. Can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Pam Chambers. We met at the networking event the other week. Oh, hi, Pam. Hi. Yeah, what can I do for you? Well, we had such a stimulating conversation, I thought, and I have been thinking about some mutually beneficial ideas that I would like to discuss with you, and I wondered if we could have lunch next week. Sure, that sounds interesting. Okay, now I just made a mistake. What I did was I said, I wonder if we could have lunch next week. That does not convey that I want to host you. So That's true. So now in your confusion. mind. Am I paying? Are you paying? It, it, exactly. So the, the initial thing of that phone conversation created confusion mm. and discomfort probably because you don't know what that means. So right away, I have not been mindful of you and I've created created a little bit of a problem. And I could I could actually feel that when you said I wonder if we could have lunch sometime next week. There was a little bit of ambiguity there and I was like Okay. Right. And and you don't know what it means. So I need to say I would like to take you to lunch next week to discuss some ideas that I have. And I like that better than I wonder if we could. Yes. I would like, I would to, like take, to take you. Okay, now I'm going to make another mistake. Okay. So I'm going to say to you, wh what couple of days do you have available next week? And I'm immediately going to pull out my calendar and be like, Poof. So just say two days. I've got Thursday and Friday available next week. Okay, Thursday, sound of calendar turning pages, Thursday. Oh, I am booked on that date. What was the other day you said? Friday. Friday. Oh, that's no good either. Okay, so this mistake. Right away, see, I asked you to name the days. That puts me in the position of being needing to say no to you. Right, which so, is awkward because I'm like, hello, do you want to take me to lunch or not? Right, I mean, why did you even call me? No, no, so unfriendly. So I need to say, would you be free next Thursday or Friday? That way, if 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 I if the answer is no, at least I'm the one being told, not not you. 
And that does make it easier because if all of a sudden you've called me up and you want to take me to lunch and I'm like, okay, and then you're like, no, I can't do that, no, I can't do that, no, right. I can't do that. Right. That, that kind of confuses me and it puts me off a little bit. Absolutely. So I would say, what two days do you have available next week? So say right. some. I have Wednesday and Tuesday. Wednesday and Tuesday, otherwise known as Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, I <laughs> um, okay, I could do Tuesday. All right, what time? Good. What time is good for you? I have an opening between 11 and 12. You have just half an hour. 11 and 12? Oh, oh you have a whole hour. Okay, yes. okay, good. So Tuesday at 11. Here comes another mistake. Okay. Where would you like to go? Now this is a mistake for multiple reasons because one, I am relatively new to the island, I don't know where to eat at all. So I also don't know where you're located versus where I'm located. So if you want to meet in, Hawa in Honolulu and I'm actually located in Eva, then that's a whole other hassle. So when you say where do you want to eat? Well, and you don't know what level of restaurant to choose. So you don't know whether to err on the side of cheapness, like McDonald's, yeah, or L and L dr McDonald's or L and L. Um, but I want you to be saying something like Murphy's or Square Barrels. Yeah. But but I made it so open ended that now you're uncomfortable again. So this is not going well. I need to say, I was thinking of, of either Ryan's or Kincaid's. Oh, no, those are closed. Um, I was thinking of either Panya or Tango at Ward Center. And I'd be, well, the first time we did meet, you asked me to meet at Ward Center, and I actually didn't know where that was, and you had to give me directions. Right. Which was helpful because uh -huh. now I know where it is. Okay, so t Tango or Panya? Tango or Panya. You know, Pam, I'm actually not familiar with either of those. All right. I trust your judgment. Which uh, one's easiest to find? Well, they're right next to each other, so they're equally easy, but one of them is quieter, so we'll go to the quieter one. Works for Great. me. Great. Okay. So now, in that series, you had a few choices. You had choices of day, time, and location, but it was controlled choices. I didn't make it so big that you were flailing about. So that's how to do that. Mm. Make, make clear that you're hosting, give choice of two places that you know work. Mm. You've been there before, you know they work. People can find them, usually. And then a choice of the hour that would be most convenient, in your case, 11 to 12. I like that. And that does remove a lot of the confusion because so so many times people, they don't know where to meet you, yeah. they don't know how to find it, they, yeah. and yeah. you'll end up, if you do this over their email, you'll end up sending like 15 emails oh. back and forth to finally get the details. Well, yeah, and that's a reason I like to do this by phone, if, if at all possible. Okay, now I'm going to get there 10 minutes early. I'm going to get there so that when you show up, I'm here. Okay. And there's no question in your mind about, was it the other place? So that's good. And then we go into the restaurant, and I want my guest you to have the best seat. So in your mind, what's the best seat? Mm, that is a good question. The paranoid part of me says the best seat is where I can see the entire room. The other part of me that wants to have a good conversation and be friendly is like the best seat is where I, I can't see the other room and I can just see you and I'm not distracted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but I don't know that about you. I don't know, I don't know you yet. So uh, it, it, a mistake I used to make was I would assume that the best seat was the one with the best view. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? You know, the, the, to you, the yeah. ocean, of course they want that. But then I would see some people blinking and their pupils would be tiny and they just didn't look all that comfortable. And it occurred to me, maybe that isn't the best seat. So then I learned, please, wherever you're comfortable, open hand, not biasing, not pointing, because some people want the seat in the corner with n nothing behind them and everything ahead of them. Other people want no distractions, so they would want nothing except people, you. Yeah, and some people want ease of access, whatever's easiest to get in and out of the booth. Yeah, but we just don't know. So because I don't know you well enough and we're learning about each other, I need to be very unbiased in how I handle this. I've got a question for you about this. Of course. This. So you said you get there 10 minutes early. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you have stuff. You've brought your purse, maybe mm -hmm. a couple bags. So when you're sitting and waiting for your guest, 
where do you put your stuff down so that you're not taking a seat from them when they get there? Well, I oh, good question. So I don't wait for them at a table. Oh. I don't al ever allow myself to be seated before my guest arrives because I have had the the hostess changes. It's a different hostess now who doesn't realize I've been seated. So if someone's out there waiting, I'm oh. in there waiting. We're both going, da da da, da what a flake. Oh, and, gosh. and one more than once we've actually not even met. So wait at the reception area. Don't allow yourself to be seated. I like that advice. That is really, really good advice. Yeah, and then your stuff is with you, of course. Right. But to answer your question, once you are seated, everything needs to go under the under the table. You don't, you know, you see bags and trip areas happening, and it looks like a baggage claim area, and no personal items on the table at all until you're ready to actually do some business. Mm. Yeah. So no having your phone out so you can check email when they're right. boring. Right. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, now, we're seated and we're looking at the menus, right? Okay. This is a multi-talented multi book. Tool, yes. <laughs> so we're looking at the menu. Now, as a normal human being, which you're not, but pretend that you are, what would you be, the, what's the first thing you'd be wondering as you look at the menu? Okay, this takes me back to when my mom would take out our family with seven kids. So you ordered the cheapest thing on the menu. And so that makes, the first thing I want to ask is, what are you ordering? Because then I know what price range you're getting and I can either match or be below it. Well, I should not have you have to ask that. It's, it, I should not expect you to ask me what, are, what am I having. I need to guide you first. Oh, so, good. so I would say, you know, RB, there are a couple of appetizers that I highly recommend, the this and the that. And now in your mind you know, okay, Appetizer. That's okay. Oh. Yeah. And then, or if I don't have the budget, time, or inclination, I could say there are a couple of entrees here that are really good. May I recommend the this or the that? And now you know, don't order an appetizer. So you'd rather know to not order that than wonder if you should and then find out later that I'm not matching that. Because mm. then you might feel. A little piggish. Yeah. yeah. And that's always the worst feeling when you, there's that awkwardness, you're not sure if you're putting them out, you're not sure yeah. if you're not taking advantage of a full meal, you yeah. never really know which way to fall. Right. Now one thing I've learned about men is that they don't like it when women, a woman that they're interested in orders, I'll just have the salad. Men don't like that. Men want a woman who knows how to eat. Hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I would love to have that prime rib. You know, so they, they, men like that. They don't want this cheapy little I'll puny. have a single kale leaf, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've guided you on either appetizer or not and the entree. And now, here comes another pivotal point. So the server comes along and, and asks you what you would like. And, and I indicate that you should be asked first. So let's say you order the veg. So what would you, what can I get for you, say vegetarian lasagna? Can I have the vegetarian lasagna, please? And what would you like? Oh, you know, I saw that prime rib station over there. And, and could you get me the rarest possible cut? And bloody even. OK, this is called a mismatch. <laughs> And oh it gosh. could make you really uncomfortable. I don't know you well enough yet. I <laughs> might actually cry. <laughs> Why? Is this really bothering so you? Funny. <laughs> okay. So, so my best bet, the best three words I can say to the server is, that sounds great. Make that too. Uh -huh. And now you get to feel like you have really good judgment, mm. that you made a good choice. Yeah. That not only did I make a good choice, but we're also similar. Mm -hmm. That you like what I like, and therefore what I like is awesome. Right. And what if you ordered the prime rib, and I'm the vegetarian? Do, do I have to now match that? I don't think so. No, I don't. So we match what we can, but sometimes we can't match everything. So we match what we can. Let's go quickly to the dessert portion. Let's say that the server asks you what you would like for dessert. Go ahead and, and so what, what could I get you for dessert? 
to I make would at this point pause and look at you and be like, is dessert allowed? Well, he, he, I didn't stop him, so I allowed him to ask you what you would like, so order something. I'll have the cheesecake, please. And now he says, and for you? And I say, mm, nothing for me, I'm good. Oh, now I feel oh, guilty. Yeah, 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 right. So now you feel <laughs> piggish, greedy, like you missed some missed cue, yeah. yeah, that you did something wrong. And, and so this is very unfair of me. I need to, because I didn't guide you to not do dessert, I need to consume something along with you. So it could be something as simple as tea. Yeah. I, but I need to be, my arm needs to be working, yeah, working with you. So, so I need to, to match that you had something. Okay, final. Now this time you don't want dessert. Okay. What can I get you for dessert? That's all for me. Thank you. And you? Oh, I would love to have the creme brulee and, and a cappuccino too. Okay. And now I'm like, I miss dessert. Right. Exactly. So now you're thinking either I don't want to have to sit here this long or why didn't she guide me better or I really would like to have something but Is it's it too, too late, late to now. So awkward, awkward, awkward. So I need to match that you didn't want dessert, I won't either and I'll get a Snickers bar at the 7-Eleven. <laughs> That is fabulous. Yeah. All right. So we've covered walking into the restaurant. We've covered all the way through dessert. And viewers, we are going to be right back to finish out this interaction. Stick around. See you in a minute. You can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the king come banging on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the war. You can talk to God go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hello, welcome back to Out of the Comfort Zone on Big Tech on Spectrum OC16. I'm your host, Arby Kelly, and I'm here with special guest, Pam Chambers. Now, we've been talking all about hosting a business luncheon. You know, those awkward things where you're not sure what to order or if you should get dessert or who's paying for it. So, Pam, you've already given us a ton of brilliant answers that, looking back, I'm wishing I knew before this because I've had so many awkward lunches. <laughs> but now I'm, I'm wondering, what if you want to leave partway? What if it's not going well? Oh, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't end it. I wouldn't truncate it if it's not going well because that's pretty rude. But let's say that I got a buzz on my phone and I glanced and it's from my sister who's in Paris and she says I need help. I would say, please forgive me, Arby. I, there's something I must handle. May I excuse myself for five minutes? And the thing you did there, you might not have catched this viewers, but she went and she touched my knee. And so this, this touch is actually telling my brain, Pam likes me, Pam cares about me, this is serious. So you've already softened that, you've told me this is serious and mm -hmm. you are so sorry that mm -hmm. this needs to be handled. Mm -hmm. And who's going to say, well, I mean, you're going to say, of course, and yeah, I'll do go and I'll come back and you'll probably ask what, what it was about. But if, if I want to leave because it's a really bad first date, like a blind date that I just hate, well, first of all, I wouldn't have made it lunch. If it's mm. a blind date situation, coffee, that's a lot, a lot easier mm. to escape. 
escape from. And it's a lot shorter, Good too. Advice. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, let's see, where were we? The, oh, I want to talk about when in the course of the meal we should bring up our business. Mm. Because remember, I had some mutually beneficial ideas. Some people don't know the etiquette rule about when to bring up the business, and there is a rule. Oh, is there? Oh, good. Please yeah, tell me. Okay. <laughs> so the rule is after the entree. Mm. Okay. There's a huge unless. Unless you say, now that we've ordered, what were those ideas? And it would be rude for me to say, no, <laughs> sister, what's your hurry? <laughs> that would be rude. So I would say, oh, I would match. I would say, oh, I'm glad that you're so interested. Why don't we get started on that until our meal arrives, and then we'll enjoy our meal. And then when the table is cleared, we'll resume, because I have some pages that I want to share with you. I like that. So it's an agenda. Now this explains to me why some people have looked so surprised when as soon as they, say, they sit down, I'm like, so what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> now I know how to handle that. <laughs> so you, you wait until, see it's not even practical to be shoveling food in and talking about a $10,000 whatever. You know, it's just not practical. So we want to separate those tasks even though we're at a lunch. Mm. Um, and then, so, so then the, now we have this agenda and afterwards. Now, because of that, you, I might find that you need to leave. So in the invitation, I would have said something like, I hope that you have about an hour and a half for this because of these business ideas. So I don't, the, the 11 to 12 probably won't work. Mm. We might want to choose a different day for that. And that is really good to make that absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. But Pam, okay, this has never happened to me before, which tells me all the, everyone here is loving your presentation. I have a voice in my ear who wants to ask you a question. Oh, okay, okay. All right. And the voice in my ear is saying, are you allowed to touch the knee even if you're a man talking to a woman or a woman talking to a man? Uh, a woman talking to a man is allowed to touch his knee. He is not. He mm. might be, he might touch my forearm. Forearm? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not hand, mm. forearm. Mm -hmm. All right. And is that still acceptable? Is there, is there anything else he should be worried about? He? Or she? Uh, no, just know that there are certain areas you can touch and they're very limited and those are what they are. All right. Now, so. the touching the knee, where, how are we seated proximally to each other? If I have to lunge across the <laughs> table, I wouldn't do that. But, but I would try to make, I would even move my hand toward the person. Even if we're sitting super far right, away, so I might say, we might just uh, like... Please forgive me. Something has come up that I must handle. So it's a it's an approximation of a touch. Mm. That's the safest. Mm. Yeah. What I do sometimes when I'm not sure if people will like a touch is I'll actually fake it out. Like mm. I'll reach out, almost touch, mm. and then lean back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Now, paying the bill. Let's mm. say that you're a man and I've invited you. I query all of my male audiences, men, how many of you are totally comfortable having the woman pay the bill? And very few hands go up, even in this day and age. Mm. And, and I say it must be in your DNA that you think you have to pay, especially for the first time. And they go, yeah, it kind of is. And I said, well, let me convince you otherwise. First of all, it's 2018. You agreed that I could host you. I know how to bring home the bacon and cook it up too. So you agreed that I could do this and for there to now be an argument about it makes me wonder if maybe you have trouble receiving. Mm. And if you have trouble receiving, what else down the road are we going to have a problem with? So it's a little test. Really, it's a test. Will he let me pay and will he be gracious about it? Interesting. Now that explains to me why I've had so many people when I'm meeting with men, they just randomly pay the bill and I'm like, oh, okay, great. But was it made clear in advance that you were gonna pay? Usually I think so, I'll say, can I take you to lunch? Okay. And then they whip out their card and I'm like, that was a surprise. So I, what I do in that situation is, uh-uh-uh, this is on me. Oh, and I am playful about it, but I want them to know 
what we agreed on is what is going to happen here mm. for the future. Interesting. Now, if he says, oh, well, next one's on me, I, I'll say, fine. fine. That's great. Next one's on you. Yeah. Great. Let's schedule it but, now. But sometimes men say, well, let me at least leave the tip. No, because to leave the tip, you have to know what that amount was. And I'm not mm. sharing that with you. Mm. This is my treat. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I think I'm still... Uh, young and stupid enough to be like, free food, I'll take it where I can. <laughs> but I appreciate this more experience, this more balanced perspective. If free food is the issue, then do free coffee instead. You know, okay. if, if money comes into it, then make it a less expensive date. Now, what do you think about thank you notes? After this, who should receive the thank you note? Mm, oh, that is tricky yeah. because you paid for food, but you got their time. Right. Well, let's see. If I was hosting it and I wanted to make the best possible impression, not only would I pay for food, but I would also send them a thank you note. Exactly. So the host sends the note to the guest for your willingness to spend time with me and to investigate these mutually beneficial ideas that I had in mind. Some people would say, well, if the guest should do a thank you note. Well, I'm, I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as thanking, sometimes people thank with an email because people expect instant gratification these days. So I might thank someone in an email and send a thank you note, oh, and this extra. is doubly powerful and, and makes a, a, a lasting impression. Now, Pam, what do you do when not only do you say thank you, but they say thank you, and then you say, no, thank you, and the, there's like this battle of who is the most grateful? Oh, I probably laugh. <laughs> We're both we're both thankful and we're both grateful. <laughs> and you just would leave it at that. Right. I would leave it at that. Yes. Now I often wonder, like I want to send a thank you note, but I'm not actually sure how to find where people are. Like I know their emails, maybe I've got their business card, but I don't really know how to get a note to them. Is it easier to find a mailing address than I think it is? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Google, LinkedIn, um, uh, well, they don't have addresses there, but the website, they're going to have an address there. Um, you could private message them and say, I have, I have something I'd like to send you. Would you please send me your mailing address? Hmm. So, yeah, I, I I like never, I've never let that be an excuse. Oh. I, I always find the address somehow because I know the power of that note. S see, what happens is when they get it, they're going to they're gonna smile. Mm. No matter what is happening around them, they're going to smile. And then they're going to prop it within view. And every time their eye lands on that, you win another point. I like that. Yeah. You've been fabulous so far, oh, Pam. I've really enjoyed you. everything. Thank and you. And we've thank got you. about one minute left. Is oh. there any last minute advice? Any last oh, thing you want to say? Yes. Keep pace with your companion when you're eating because if one of you finishes before the other and the server clears that plate away, the person who's still eating suddenly feels awkward. So you want to keep pace so that, that doesn't happen. If you should finish first and they try to take your plate, you would say, please leave it. Hmm. Please leave it. Because then you would feel awkward. Yeah. You'd feel like I'm you were taking too long. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've actually I've completely lost my appetite once that happens. I don't feel sick. I just don't feel like I should finish that because it appears that it's over. That makes sense. So Pam, I really hope we can have you back on the show. <laughs> I feel like you're just, there's so much to learn about. And I love that you make everything so simple and clear and easy to understand. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for coming. And I hope we'll see you again soon. And thank you, viewers. We'll see you next time. Bye.